start streaming. What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday. You notice I got my guitar here. I'm going to do some guitar playing. We're going to talk about breaking down Toto's greatest song. First of all, we're going to figure out what Toto's greatest song is. But before we start, we have a huge sale today uh, of the Ultimate Bundle which has returned $99 uh, for everything. This is the price of what my uh, Quick Lessons uh, Interactive is. And that's for all, for all three, for the Quick Lessons Pro course, for my Beato Book Interactive, and for my Beato Ear Training course. All are one price of 99 bucks through the weekend. So um, if you were waiting to get this, this is the time to do it. Um, and I want to mention that next week or this uh, coming week, I'm heading to Seattle. There's a few tickets left for those of you that live in Seattle to get to come see me live on the 6th at the Neptune Theater um, in Seattle. I've got some interviews planned with uh, members of, I'll just tell you now, uh, members of uh, this is actually leading up to the show. I have interviews with members of Nirvana, Soundgarden, and Pearl Jam. So these will be videos that will be coming out after the show, obviously after I get back from Atlanta. And um, uh, and then I've got my show where I'll be breaking down songs. I'll be doing live What Makes This Song Great breakdowns of songs I cannot do on my channel. I'm going to be uh, doing Q&A with the audience, so hopefully get to meet some of you that come to the show. And um, and I also have a new thing that I'm going to be trying out, which is a, um, a theory that I've been developing on... Um, well, I'll tell you about it for those of you that come to the show. And also, I'll be playing in Los Angeles on August 20th at the Wilshire Ebell Theater. So get your tickets while you can. That's coming up soon. That's about three weeks away. Very psyched to do these shows. Um, I may have some special guests at both shows, but I'm not uh, going to announce that now. So while you get your tickets, go there now, pick them up to both shows. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the uh, these, these Toto songs. So first of all, it's like, okay, what is Toto's greatest song? Well, Toto has a lot of great songs. Um, that uh, Toto's first record came out when I was in high school. Once again, 1978. 78 seems to be a year. The, the Police, Van Halen, One, Toto. There's so many records. The Cars' first record all came out that, that year. Um, but I am very partial. I was very partial to Hydra, but I'm very partial to Toto 4. And obviously that has songs like Africa that has 1.2 billion plays just on Spotify alone. Massively big song. But that is not what I think greatest Toto's greatest song. Rosanna is definitely one of Toto's greatest songs, okay? Um, there's another song, this song, which I love, called Good For You. You guys know this song? If you're a dream, sun don't you rise. I've never been lost. So deep into eyes. God, I love I Jeff Picaro. So Boy, good. Love that change. I was realizing when I went back, I was listening to some songs off off of Hydra, like the t the title track. And it, and it occurred to me that when it gets into the song, So it occurred to me on this record when you listen to it, Thriller. Oh, 
Or this song, White Sister, is a great song. Listen to this. These songs, Thriller sounds like this record, right? Because all the guys in Toto are playing on Thriller. Uh, White Sister's amazing. If Steve Lukather, you know I made the video on on um, on the guitar solo from Christopher Cross, Ride Like the Wind, being the lowest guitar solo, the, uh, the greatest guitar solo you can't hear. Uh, actually, this it's probably the guitar solo from White Sister is really the greatest guitar solo you can't hear because I, I it occurred to me when I was listening to it that, well, it's always occurred to me that it's almost inaudible. Listen. There's two solos. Like the solo at the end here. Oh, so good. Okay, that solo is louder than, than Ride Like the Wind, but that solo is so good. Wow. But what is my favorite Toto song, which I think is the best written Toto song? It's actually off Toto 4, and I'll tell you why I like it. Because Steve Lukather wrote the whole song, and um, and I learned something from this song, actually. Um I learned a lot from this song. I learned about chord movements because uh, this is this is 1982, and this has really interesting chord movements in the pre-chorus. And um, I, I don't know of another song that does this. Well, let's talk about it here. It's a ballad. I'll talk about it in another episode about the bridge on this, a solo section. So it starts out E flat, C minor. G minor, so so E flat, B flat over E flat, C minor, G minor seven, with that moving piano line, right? Okay, this is this is amazing right here. Listen. And then, okay, so I had never heard anyone use these three first inversion chords in a row, and it, the melody over it is really incredible. So um, the verse, let's talk about this here. Um, da -na -na. That's in the piano part. E flat, B flat over E flat, beautiful chord. Do 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 do. Then the pre-chorus. I love that. That tritone move there. So A flat major. Time can erase the love we share. Then he goes down to the first inversion. Uh, it's really the mu chord from Steely Dan. Do, 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 So you've got A flat major over C, A flat add nine over C, B flat add nine over D, C add nine over E. Really, really unusual uh, progression there, right? And A flat, then chorus. I love 
love all the fills that, that break up the two lines. Okay, so that pre-chorus, or that chorus there, hold on, let me tune my low E because it's gotten a little bit out. With these, uh, all these inverted chords like this, you can't have an out-of-tune guitar. Okay, so uh, the chorus is like, uh, you know. And the line once again it's awkward to hold my guitar up like this here and play let's let's listen to that chorus again love that Beautiful. Hear the bass. Ba, 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 ba. Beautiful. Outlines that sus chord. Listen. Right here. Perfect. Okay, I just want to say before we go on, the string arrangement, the orchestral arrangement in this is by James Newton Howard, the famous film composer who didn't become a famous film composer until after this record. This is really, I, I think people heard his work on this record, and this is where he got, um, where he started getting work. Steve Lukather's singing is absolutely phenomenal. This is the thing that people, I think, don't realize. He sings the verse of Rosanna. He sings this whole song. He's got an amazing emotive voice, right? Second verse. Gives me time. Beautiful strings there and vocals. Listen to the voice right here. And a killer drum fill by Jeff Picaro there. Just absolutely killer. Listen to how open his voice is on that. This is real pro singing. I mean, Lukather is one of the greatest session guitar players ever. One of the greatest solo guitar, I mean, soloist, my God, incredible guitar player. Blows my mind. He's a great songwriter. He has so many hits and he's a great singer. Like how do you how can you be so good at everything? I mean, it really blows me away. It makes me kind of depressed. Uh, you all know that I'm a terrible singer. I sounded very southern there. You all know. You all know that I'm a terrible singer. I admit it. I cannot sing well. I did do a video recently, and people said, "You know, Rick, if you practice." I read a few comments, and a couple of people. It was probably people from my family under a different name, but saying that. If you take a few lessons, you might not be that bad of a singer. Um, but I think that that ship has sailed. Uh, I'm gonna say again that uh, huge discount uh, sale today, the ultimate bundle through the weekend, 99 bucks for all of my educational products, okay? The Beato Book uh, Interactive, which is my Beato book, but with videos, video lectures, audio examples of everything and everything rewritten. And by the way, if you've bought my Beato book in the past and have not upgraded, go to beatobook.com and upgrade uh, because it, you'll really be able to use this like never before. My ear training course, where it teaches you to know the difference to, between E flat major and B flat over E flat 
Uh, my cousin Janine, thank you, Janine. Rick using y'all. This is my first cousin, my dear first cousin Janine. And yes, you can sing. Janine's dad was my mom's brother, and he was a brilliant musician, bass player. Um, and uh, Janine, you're very nice, but you, I, I'm a, not a good singer, but I appreciate it. See, I see, what did I say? My family members are the only ones that say, Rick, you could be a good singer or you are a good singer. Um, so uh, 99 bucks for all of my educational products, including my Quick Lessons Pro guitar course. Um, listen to Lukather's voice, how it opens up here in the pre-course. This really is, is incredible. I cannot think of another song that has three first inversion chords in a row, okay? It's not about the chords, it's about the melody that he sings over them. Realize just how much you care. Let's not open his voices on that. Great vibrato, right? I love that. Right here. Open. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I hate to go back to that fill, but that fill is so weird. It's great. It just comes in at the strangest place. It's right on time, but only Jeff Beccaro is going to play that fill like that, right? Listen. Come on. Billy, that's a weird fill, right? Where it comes in. It, very odd, right? Not not anywhere that you would expect a drum fill to start. I just that's just a genius. Jeff Beccaro, genius. Listen again. Second chorus. Listen to the. Okay, I hate to keep stopping. I'll let it play. Listen to James Newton Howard's orchestration. Listen to the little string lines. And listen to the brass that comes in during the solo here, the, the French horns, listen. Okay, so I asked Steve about this. Um, when did I interview him? I interviewed Luke probably a year ago, maybe, or something. And I asked him about the guitar solo section in this song. And he said um, that he, when they went in to record it, he didn't have it. And he said he sat down at the piano, he wrote it in five minutes, right? Um, da, 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 do, 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 do. Great move. E flat major seven. Do, do. So if, if you think about this. D major to the flat nine, to the flat seven. Da, 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 to the, to the uh, sharp 11. But listen to the lead into the solo. I love that how he goes that um, he does that hammer on. That's first time I ever heard anyone do that. Uh, 
let's go back to the lead in though. Then here. Beautiful. That hurt my hand. <laughs> I have heavier strings on here than my normal eights, so it was really a... Uh, oh, I can't even... Man, I'm, a, I'm pretty weak there. Uh, barely get up a whole step there. Maybe play it there. Um, it's beautiful then. Beautiful vocals. Love that. You know, um, anytime you have a break in a melody like that, it's always great to have some counter melody, right? An answer, vocal, something. But to have the uh, have that that line there is just so satisfying to fill in in that space. It's great songwriting technique there. Great arrangement. Thank you, Michelle. Oh, and then the triplet fill there. Listen. Listen, uh, triple fill in the drums. And he really delays that. Blum, blum, psh. Listen to the downbeat of, that, of the crash. It's so laid back. Listen right there at the end of that fill. I love this. And Picaro fills through that, the tom fills, he has that rolling tom fill that's really his style. Through that, do, 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 right? Listen, listen. But he, and he's nailing the crashes with it too, it's beautiful. I Won't Hold You Back is the name of the song some people are asking, listen. These are subtle things, but listen to the backbeat after the fill, okay? Most people rush these things, most inexperienced drummers. The first backbeat is so laid back after that drum fill. Listen, listen. Right here. Notice he goes right in, right along with the piano there too. Listen. I mean, really, just just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, so you know, I'll say it again, Steve Lukather, genius, really, absolute genius. Um. Guy I always looked up to, uh, uh, the ultimate musician, can play, can come up with parts in the studio, 
uh, uh, is a phenomenal soloist, is a great songwriter and a great singer. Very, um, you know, just it's so unusual. Somebody uh, said, said in here what you might call craftsmanship right there. That really is, that really is songwriting craftsmanship. Now, you know, Steve wrote songs with David Foster, with Jay Graydon, with, you know, what, he wrote hit songs as a songwriter outside of Toto and is on a million records. He's on a million famous records. Like I said, uh, uh, Thriller, Michael Jackson Thriller is Toto with Michael Jack Jackson singing pretty much. That's it, you know? That's why... Um, uh, that's why. Okay, so somebody uh, just said, I cannot believe the value contained in the ultimate bundle. Ear training course by itself is a lifetime of education, but bundled with my book. Yes. Here's the deal. The reason that that I do these sales for the live streams here is because, number one, I appreciate people coming on here, okay, and supporting the channel this way. The, the lack of of, of of good, solid education, and um, especially with ear training and incorporating music theory, not as a being a music nerd and saying, oh, I know what this is, I know what this is. I mean, I'm a music nerd. Uh, but understanding so that you can broaden your appreciation of all different types of music, not just rock music, not hip hop, not EDM, classical music, jazz music, avant-garde music. I was listening to some of Frank Zappa's uh, classical records. Um, Boulez conducting Zappa today. Um, and, you know, some of the, there There is so much to be gathered from music outside things that you would normally listen to. This is why I've tried to go... Uh, uh, where I talked about John Williams this week. By the way, John Williams' son, Joe, is the lead singer of Toto and has been for years. Think about this. John Williams, the greatest film composer of all time, his son is, has been the lead singer of Toto for, I don't know, 20 years, Joe Williams, something like that, for a long time. Um, and it's important to, to experience... To, to, exp to expand your musical horizons, which includes learning what you hear. When you hear something, when you hear this chord progression, right? knowing where those notes are, why they're, you know, da, da, you know, it's a perfect fourth, da, 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 then it goes down, da, da, down a half step, then da, 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 right? Knowing those intervals, being able to hear this, this is why I created an ear training program to teach you these things. So go to rickbeata.com. You can purchase all of my in educational products for 99 bucks. If you, if you watch my channel and haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. You know, people, I never asked for people to subscribe in the past. And when you don't ask, they don't do it. That's why... You know, three million people watch my channel regularly and are not subscribed. And by the way, if you're free and and live in the Seattle area, you want to come and see me play or do a live show next a week from this Saturday, November or I'm sorry, August sixth. I'll be at the Neptune Theater in Seattle. I'm going to be doing live breakdowns of what makes this song great, things that you cannot hear on this channel. I'm going to do a Q and A with the audience. I might have some special guests, but I'm also going to be debuting this new concept that I have that I've been working on. Um, I'll tell you about it when uh, if you come. And August 20th at the Wilshire Ebel Theater in Los Angeles. Love to see you guys out there. Uh, come out, say hello, ask questions. Um, I have done did one show in the past. I've got one more show at, in November in Chicago. That may be my, the last show I ever do. I don't know. It depends on how these go. Uh, how, if they're, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of, um, um, the one in New York was so fun, 
but it's been of so many months now. Now I'm kind of like, oh, how's this going to go again? And there's a lot of pressure out there. And uh, anyway, it was it was so fun. It was so great. Uh, let's see, Terry V. Let's see, my favorite Toto songs are Jay. Jake the Moon, Dave's Gun Skiing, Love is the Power. Cool. Um, you guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Really appreciate you uh, stopping by today. Uh, go back, rewind if you didn't get a chance to hear the whole um, the whole lecture on uh, on Toto and on Steve Lukather. But um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Hit the subscribe button. Check out my latest video. Not my studio tour. Well, you check out my studio tour, but check out my greatest minute of music where I, I where I actually do a John Williams breakdown that I think is is very cool. Watch it to the end because my daughter Layla makes a, a guest appearance in it. And um and she has some really insightful things to say about this um this fanfare of John Williams. We'll see you later. Have a great day.